Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Databricks video. What we are going to see today is the best practices that we need to use as guidelines when building data pipelines in Databricks. We are going to use Delta Life tables to build the pipeline as it would be faster and easier, but the same principles apply whether you build the pipeline with or without Delta Life tables. We are going to use Confluent Kafka this time and consume data from Kafka topics. This is a very typical scenario at work. We are going to do everything in one notebook for the sake of this demo, but usually you can break it down to multiple notebooks, so it's easier to debug. As always, we are going to follow the medallion architecture to build the bronze, the silver and the gold layer. We are going to apply almost everything we have learned so far in one pipeline, and we will follow the best practices recommended by Databricks Academy. So let's move to our Databricks workspace. Before we move to Databricks Workspace, actually let's go to Azure portal and we need to create a Confluent Kafka account. So here on the search bar, search for Confluent Kafka, click on that, then click on create, provide all the necessary information, resource group, region, uh, Confluent organization name, pay as you go, review and create. I have already created one, so let's click on that on the overview tab. Scroll down where it says Manage Confluent, launch the uh, Confluent Kafka website. And now it's redirecting us to our account. You can create a simple cluster. I think uh, the basic one is for free. And now let's create a topic. I have already created the cluster. Let's create actually two topics. As you can see, here is my cluster. We click on here. Uh, we click on topics. Let's create a topic. Let's call it topic underscore one. Six partitions. We don't care about the partitions right now. Let's create a second topic. Topic two. That's fine. Create with default. And then you have to go here where it says API keys and you add a key, right? And then when you add the key, uh, click on global access, next, etc., etc. And then you download and continue because you will use this secret and this key later on to connect to Confluent Kafka from your Databricks environment. So download this one and let's move to Databricks uh, workspace now. Okay, here in our Databricks workspace, I have two scripts, as you can see. The first one is the one that we use, we are going to use to generate fictitious data and send it to the Kafka topics. We are going to create a da one data set that will be only on topic one and the second data set that will be only on topic two, because as you can understand, Different data sets uh, usually go to different topics. It makes sense, right? So here for the first uh, data set, we are creating a Spark data frame. So let me run this. You will see on the data here, ID, name, occupation, and age. Very, very simple. And here we select ID as key. So when you are using Kafka, you have to provide a key and a value. If you don't provide a key, I think uh, the data would be distributed with a round robin fashion. Otherwise, if you provide a key, it will be distributed based on the key. So if we run this, you will see the key and the values here. So key one, two, three, four, five, and the values in a dictionary. And now using this uh, expression here, I'm going to actually here provide a name as a key, not an ID. It doesn't really matter. This is not uh, a Kafka uh, demo. So here we are going to write to our um, Kafka topic one. You can find the bootstrap servers if you go to your Confluent uh, Kafka under cluster settings. You can find the bootstrap server. You copy that and you paste it here and then you provide the topic name, apparently. And here where it says username, you provide 
the key. If you go to API keys, you provide the key here and the secret would be the password, right, that you provide here. And this is how we are going to send data to uh, Kafka topic. Okay, that's fine. And here is the second data set. We are going to have ID, middle name, location, distance, and update type. We have only insertions here. In the first batch, we are going to do the same thing, right to the second topic this time, because that's a different data set. And then also provide two more records that already exist. One will be an update. We are going to update the location from, I think I have here, where is that? Kate is Michigan. We are going to update the location to Oregon. And then we delete uh, this record with ID4. That's why the update type is delete here. Let's uh, go, let's run this one and let's send the same uh, the data to the second topic again. So let's go into our uh, Confluent Cloud. And then if you go under Topics, you will go to Topic 1 under messages you will see the messages should appear sometimes you have to wait a little bit total messages five and uh, that's fine so let's wait as you can see yep you you can see the data here and the same goes for topic two under messages we will have more total messages are seven remember we sent two batches of data here and you will see the data okay perfect okay so let's move to the second script which is uh, the purpose of this video what we are going to do here we are going to use delta live table framework in order to build our pipeline but again the same principles apply whether you are using just spark and delta tables whether you are using delta live tables it doesn't really matter the same logic applies. It's just how you you should build pipelines, at least according to Databricks guidelines, right? So first we import the libraries, the Delta Live Table library, the SQL functions here, the types and a window function. Uh, I think I, I'm not sure that we are using that, so let me remove that. Let's say we have a lookup table, a date dimension lookup table, usually you have a table like that, like it has the date, uh, you know, the date key, the month, the week, etc., etc., and you perform lookup activities, left outer joints, etc., etc., to get the dates you want. Let me run this, and here is our lookup table with all the. Uh, we have one date column and one date key column and we are going to perform a left outer join of the original data set with this lookup table based on the date and then we are going to get the date key apparently there is no actually uh, business logic here but this is what typically happens when you have a, a date dimension or a product dimension and all those things and you and you want the extra information so before we move actually let's uh, change this to python and here this is uh, using spark streaming we are going to consume the data from the kafka topics providing all these options here and then we add the column and then we join uh, the timestamp column here when we have already converted to date with the date column of the lookup table up here we filter based on the topic and then we flatten out the value column and we select the uh, the data we want let's uh, let me spin up the cluster and run this cell here only to see how we can consume data from confluent kafka using spark streaming here we are so let's wait for for it to display the data stream initializing okay and we are reading all the data from topic one you can use it to read data from topic two apparently i just want to display that the same code here that we are using for spark streaming will be used 
with Delta Live tables. So it's exactly the same thing whether you are using Spark streaming or Delta Live tables. And here we have the data here, right? Let me interrupt this. Let's continue with our notebook. Now, the best practice here is to create a raw view that consumes data from Confluent Kafka. And here again, as you can see inside the return statement, we use Spark.readStream Kafka format. We provide the bootstrap service. If you are reading from multiple topics, just use subscribe pattern and then dot star to select your all the topics. We are starting from the earliest offset and we provide the username and the password dot load. We load the data and here we create the Delta Live table view called row view. And here we have defined this view creation under a function called dev create row underscore view. And here we call the function. Uh, so this is a Delta Live table, so we cannot run it using interactive cluster, but you can see actually uh, you can see the structure here. We have a function inside the function. We define a Delta Live table view and then we uh, and then we call this function. The next step is actually to create a generic bronze table that would contain all the data from all the topics and also the date key column. So what we are going to do is read from the row view that we created here that has all the data consumed from Confluent Kafka. We are going to create a new uh, column called process timestamp with a current timestamp and then we are going to join with the lookup table and based on the timestamp column and use a left outer join and we are going to get the date key from the lookup table and also we want the value column, the topic uh, column here, the timestamp and the processed timestamp. Uh, we want the value column that you'll find on Confluent Kafka here, the value column and the timestamp column. And then we create a generic bronze table based on the partition keys would be topic and date key. And we should expect that the topic is not null, apparently. And then we have this generic table. What we want is actually split the data from this generic bronze table into specific bronze tables for specific data sets based on the topic, right? Because here, remember, we read all the data from all the topics. That's what we have here. That's why we provided topic dot star. We read all the data from all the topics and we stored all the data here with the columns that we want after performing a left outer join with the lookup table. But now what we want is to split again the data to separate data sets based on the topic and that's why we created this generic function here called create bronze topic table. So this function here takes as parameters the table name, the topic name, the JSON schema and the columns that we want to select. And apparently here when we specify the Delta Live table we have to pass the table name which is the one that we passed here as a parameter. And in the return statement, we read from the daily row table that we uh, create up here. We specify the, the topic, we filter based on the topic. So if it's topic one, it's one data set. If it's topic two, it's a different data set. And then we need to flatten out the value column after we have cast it as string and we have provided the JSON schema using from underscore JSON we flatten out the value column and we call it body and then we select all the columns from uh, that we want plus the extra columns that we need which is topic, date, key, timestamp and process timestamp and then here as a parameter we pass the columns that we want to select right so here we have all the columns and here we pass the columns that we actually need. And using a dictionary, actually that's a very nifty way of doing things, of 
make things generic and parameterize things and you can create you know 100 tables using this this method here we have a dictionary and we specify the uh, the, the tables the topic based on the topic the JSON schema and the select columns so here for this is the table name we will have a table called bronze underscore occupation and the topic would be topic one so all the data that we consume from topic one would go under this table we have to provide a schema that would be ID name occupation and age and then the columns that we want on this uh, table and that's here this is the columns that we want the same for the second data set that we read from the second topic the table name would be bronze underscore location we provide the JSON schema and the columns that we want to select so bear in mind that if you have usually in production you would have you know like 10 topics or something so you would need 10 tables and this is how you can make uh, things generic using a dictionary we you pass the uh, parameters here you create actually you know the table uh, properties and then here using this function you are calling this function and one by one a table is being created which is actually a quite nifty method to do things and here using a just for each uh, loop we use for target table params in the bronze table underscore items uh, here the dictionary so we read from this dictionary and then we call the create underscore bronze underscore topic table which is this function here and we pass the parameter so the target table which is the key here in this dictionary so that could be bronze underscore occupation and then the params which is the topic JSON schema and the select columns and within a, with a for loop you can create you know 100 tables right so this is a very cool way to actually create tables based on the same logic we are going to continue with the silver layer we are going to use the same generic method to create the silver tables again on the serial layer we apply data quality rules now imagine in your database you will have multiple data quality rules for each data set for example here i am using a data frame not a database that i have uh, our data quality rules but usually this is in the database and here we have the topic name and here we provide the condition that the name should not be null or the occupation should be different to teacher and that's for topic one and for topic two the middle name should not be null and the location should be different to california so we have these data quality rules and then we create a generic function to just get a dictionary with the name of the data quality rule and the condition itself so here we select the topic we want and then we get a dictionary with the data quality rules for this topic pretty simple right so now we have to create a generic function in order to create our silver layer and that could be first the silver table and then two views with the valid records and the invalid records because we are going to apply these data quality rules here now on the main table we are going to use expect underscore all and then we are going to apply the rules that we get uh, back from this function that we define here which is a dictionary with the data quality name and the condition itself as you notice on the main table we are using expect and we are not using expect or drop or expect or fail because what actually happens when you use only expect that means even if the records are invalid and they do not conform with the data quality rules that you have here 
they still get inserted to the target table. So the trick here is that we use expect all and we pass the rules, the data quality rules that we get as a return from this function here. But here inside the create quarantine table, we create a column called is quarantined. And that means that if it's quarantined, then it's an invalid record. But here we pass the quarantine rules, which is exactly the same data quality rules that we have, but with a not, that means exactly the opposite rules. So if a record is invalid, then the is quarantine flag here would be true. And we read from the table that we just created above. So as you can see, the table name would be the dataset name. So we read from this newly created table and we filter based on the is quarantined flag. So if it's false, then we get only the valid records. If it's true, then we get the invalid records. So we have one main table and we have one column, one flag column, which says which record is valid and which is not. And then two views, one with the valid records and one with the invalid records. Pretty, pretty cool, right? So then we, again, we are going to parameterize this uh, function here with, we need to pass the data set, the topic, the source table, the valid view and the if invalid view. And here we provide all the information needed in order to create the table and the views. Now the target table would be silver underscore occupation quarantine and silver underscore location quarantine. And here we have to provide the topic name again because the topic is how we filter the data, the source, the valid view, how it would be uh, named and the invalid view. The same for the second data set. And here in the for loop, we use again, we just call this function that we created here. And this is how we can create the silver layer um, in a generic way. We call the function, we create the table and the views with the valid and the invalid records. Moving on, we can use salting when hashing and uh, we can categorize the data for extra security, provide the redacted string if we don't want the users to see confidential data. We also have to drop the duplicates and we can apply slowly changing dimension of type 1 and type 2. And here we have the salted hashing function. Uh, we use bins as uh, salt here. We categorize the age and uh, if the age uh, is greater than, you know, uh, 45 here, we provide redacted, but this is how you can specify which, uh, you know, which users can see which data. And uh, here we create the silver underscore occupation clean table. We are going to read from the valid underscore civil occupation view which is this one here where we create a view the valid view from the previous step and uh, we're going to use the salted has function that we have here to uh, create an alternative id we we can apply some transformations here we can use the age categorization function up here providing the age can create the age bracket and using with watermark for uh, for 30 seconds intervals, we drop the duplicates based on alternative ID and updated column. And the same for the location clean. I think we have also provided a case when statement, the distance check. So if distance is less than 10, then it's an invalid record. Otherwise, it's okay. Uh, that's fine here. And uh, we are dropping the duplicates as well. We are applying the salting has function, etc., etc. And here then we are using slowly changing dimension of type one and type two. As we said, we need to use 
a streaming table for target table and source table. Here we are creating the serial underscore location uh, clean, we use it as a source. The target is location clean. We use the alternative ID as a key, sequence by timestamp. Update type is uh, equals delete here. So if there is a delete, we just remove the record. And we can accept this column. And the same for slowly changing dimension of type 2 in order to have uh, to keep the historical data as well. So one table using the slowly changing dimension of type 1 and one table with the historical data using slowly changing uh, dimension of type 2. And at last we have the gold layer. Here we are performing, we are creating the aggregated views for the business users, right? Here I'm using a SQL statement. Now when you are using Delta Live tables, you cannot combine SQL with Python in the same notebook, but there is a trick. You can use spark.sql and just use your SQL syntax here. I'm selecting data from the location underscore clean underscore slowly changing the dimension of type 2 here. When distance check is OK, and the record is the most recent one, so it's an open record. That's why we have end at is null. That means it's the latest version of the record. We're selecting these columns here, and then we perform a left join with the serial occupation clean, where its brackets get different to reducted. And we join based on ID, and we group by here based on date key, ID, and name, and we get the average distance. Apparently, there is no logic here, but you know, usually on the gold layer, we have our aggregated views for the business users. So that's what I'm doing here. Before I run the uh, pipeline, when we are using Delta Live tables, we don't, we cannot have a normal Python script. So let me comment this out. And now if we scroll to Delta Live tables, we can create a pipeline called demo triggered specify the notebook here hive metastore target schema example fixed size zero workers and then we are good to go let's create that and let's run the pipeline click on start it will take a few minutes so give it some time. The pipeline is running. As you can see here, we can see the data moving from one table to another uh, live. And this is pretty cool. Now we are loading the serial tables. And uh, the last one would be the materialized view. Let's wait. But it's pretty cool that you can see the date of the data flowing from one table to another in real time, which is amazing. That's what you get when you are using Delta Live tables. OK, here we are. I think the gold layer, no, uh, the gold layer is still queued. Let's wait for the slowly changing dimensions tables to uh, be completed. Yeah, now we are loading the gold layer. As you can see, this is uh, we have all the data lineage here between the tables and the dependencies, which is amazing because you can build it, as you can see, a data pipeline within, you know, with one notebook within a few hours, and you can make a very complex pipeline very quickly. Now let's go into our Hive Meta Store. You will see we have all those tables here on the daily row you have let's see the data this is all the data that we consumed from the kafka topics from both topics if we had more than two we uh, we would have still all the data for all the topics as you can see we have both the data for both topics and uh, this is the value column right and then we have the 
bronze tables which is based which are based on the daily row generic table and here we have actually flattened out the data we have id middle name location distance all this information the same for the other bronze table we have the data here so we have a generic table with all the data and then we create uh, specific bronze tables for each data set based on the topic then we have the silver quarantine table uh, and here we have again all the data but as you can see uh, we have this flag here called is quarantined when this is true that means that actually that this record is invalid so this uh no this is a not a valid record but however it's good to have the record here for historical purposes to and just to know what uh, came in we don't want to drop the record that's why we had the views right here if you check the views we had the invalid uh, view with the invalid records and the valid view with the valid records now the only drawback using data live tables here is that you cannot actually see the data within a view because it's it's a simple view not a materialized view so here uh when then we have the occupation quarantine table with this sample data i think everything is okay this is not valid this record is not valid as well yeah remember we filter out everything uh, with occupation is teacher and uh, this is the slowly changing dimension of type 2 and here yeah that's correct so here as you can see this record uh, middle name Denzel ID4 this is the one that it got deleted and that's why this is a closed record so there is this record is not valid anymore it go, it got deleted but using slowly changing dimension we can see that this record w was once here until it got deleted and then the same for record with uh, id5 first it was the location was michigan then it got updated and the location was oregon so this one this record here is closed because uh because michigan was valid from this timestamp to this timestamp and then it got updated the record got updated so this record is now open and this is the latest version of the record and then on the gold layer uh i think i guess somewhere here let me refresh yep here is a gold layer gold table it only has two records because actually we perform an aggregation here you can see the average distance based on date key id and name and here as you can see we have created a whole data pipeline and not uh, you know a very easy one actually it's quite complex we achieved many of things here using this generic format that we can create uh, multiple tables at once and uh, we can use uh, functions to create multiple tables and it's a very nifty pipeline it looks so cool actually here when you use delta life tables anyway this is it for today guys these are the recommended guidelines to follow when you build pipelines in databricks based on databricks academy I'm using Delta Life tables for this demo, but the logic is the same regardless if you are using Spark Streaming or Delta Life tables. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and you found it insightful and helpful. If you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.